season and he had some thoughts. So first up, Jimmy Butler's future with the team. As Jimmy ages and he's going to be 35 years old uh, this year, I know players take better care of themselves these days, but we're talking about mid 30s into late 30s. Are you confident that he can still be a 1A type player to lead this team to a championship, provided that he's healthy in the playoffs if yes. you put the right pieces? Yes. I think he has that ability, but it's like, you know, it's like anybody else. You might have to make some changes in, in your, your overall routine, your approach to the game, you know, whatever it is. So there, by the way, when somebody says ages, Pat Riley's face kind of got weird. But, okay, there's the first one. We're just going to go into this slowly. What would you think about that? <laughs> I'll say he's the godfather for a reason, right? Really this is, is why you like him. This is why you respect him. But I just feel like this is... These are comments that should happen between him and Jimmy Butler, him and the organization, him and the front office. Like, he doesn't have to go and say the type of stuff that we're going to get into afterwards. Publicly. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with that, but again, he keeps it real and he's calling it like he sees it. And, and there's no fabrication with Pat Riley. He's always been this way. So the truth hurts sometimes. And a lot of the things that he says coming up, I agree with. This is, uh, he's right. Jimmy Butler has the capability of being the number one option. Has he shown it every single night? No. Does he have this magic button to be good in the playoffs? No. Like, that no. doesn't exist. That's just, that's just a thing that we created, that the Heat are really good in the playoffs. They weren't this year. And that doesn't mean they're going to be bad or good next year. But Jimmy Butler, I think, is a critical piece of their, their team moving forward. He's a foundation piece. But, listen, Pat Riley keeps it 100, as the kids as say. As the kids do say, Lou. You know what? Oh, what'd you, what were you going to say, Lou? Sorry. I mean, I like the I like the transparency, but if I'm if I'm Jimmy Butler and I'm taking care of myself, I'm 35. You're still saying I'm a 1A guy. You st you're saying I have the ability, but then at the end of it, you say I have to make some changements and I gotta adjust some things. And if, if I'm Jimmy, I'm saying, well, well, what? And why are we having this conversation in public? Um, you know, I understand you're at a press conference, but you're giving me all of these props, and then you ended with saying that I need to make some adjustments and I need to change my approach to things. And if I'm doing everything that I feel like I should be to to garner the respect of you saying I'm still a 1A guy, what adjustments do I need to make? And why are we having this conversation in front of media? So, because what's going to happen is if Jimmy Butler comes out today and decides to have a rebuttal to this in public, now we're going to criticize Jimmy Butler for having something to say when he's only responding. So I, I, I'm not in love with with uh, the, the stance that Pat Riley took. I'm cool with, the, with it being... Um, out in the open and, and everybody having an opinion and him saying it in a, in a press conference, but I, I just didn't agree with some of the comments. Well, in fairness, uh, Pat also had, was given a, an opportunity to respond to what Jimmy Butler did publicly when he trolled uh, the Celtics and the Knicks, for that matter. So here's Pat on that. You know, for him to say that, you know, I thought, is that Jimmy trolling or is that Jimmy serious? You know, if you're not on the court, playing against Boston or on the court playing against the New York Knicks, you should keep your mouth shut and your criticism of those teams. How about that one, Lou? <laughs> I'm, I'm more impressed that he even knew how to use the word trolling, right. Michelle. That's how you use trolling when you're old. That's yep. it right there. Trolling. For, for me old. and Pat and all of us old guys and all of us old people that's just trying to keep up with all the slang, I love the fact that Pat Riley even knew how to use this. But <laughs> I, but I, I agree. Listen, this goes for everybody. If you're not putting on a uniform, you got to chill out and you got to be quiet and allow the guys that's going on the court to do the talking with their play and stay out of it. Yeah, I mean, he sunned him a little bit here, and I feel like bit. it's not really how you're supposed to talk to your franchise 35-year-old vet player, but <laughs> I'm with Lou. I, I, I agree, and this... This reminds me of the Tari Eason thing. It's oh, like, very much. You're not playing, and these teams are are playing, and they had a better season than you, and they're still continuing to play while you're on vacation, and they're competing for a championship. So it's, it's, it's. I guess it's a cool comment to say at the time. Like I understand what Jimmy's trying to do, but at the same time, like, pipe down. Like and, you're, you're, you're. And not. you know what else, Chandler? It's it's kind of it's kind of separation, right? Because yeah. you know Jimmy is saying, if I were playing, this would be completely different. We'll be up, we'll be smacking these guys. It's like, well, what are you saying about yeah, the rest of the organization, good. especially when you're the Miami Heat and everything is built around Heat culture. It's never been built around individual talent. They've always had a team first approach to things. And so, if if you're Pat Riley and, and Jimmy is saying these things, this is a fair criticism. Yeah. I think I think it's very fair. Um, but I'm wondering, Shams, do we? Is there any movement 
possible the future of Jimmy Butler out? I mean, I have a hard time picturing it, but could he be moved out of Miami? Well, Pat, Pat Riley said a couple interesting things. One is like he did, they really don't have to make a decision on Jimmy Butler un, until you know next year when his contract is up, when he has a player option. He's got forty million dollars next season, fifty-two million dollar player option for twenty-five. 26 and their team clearly out there that would extend Jimmy Butler if they had him and they were able to trade for him uh, You know, but he's clearly wanted to be in Miami like he's seen that as a perfect marriage of sorts and To me, I just look at the five seasons Jimmy Butler has spent in Miami two NBA finals appearances three conference finals appearances He's either first or second in all the major categories points assists rebounds steals blocks He's third most in games played behind Bam Adebayo and behind Duncan Robinson. So when you think about availability, he has been up there in terms of games played. I mean, he, more games played than even a guy like Tyler Hero. The Heat are 177 and 114 with Jimmy Butler in the lineup. They're 48 and 49 without him. They're 35 and 22 with him in the playoffs. They're two and five without him. And even just this year, I reported <laughs> on it. He played three quarters with a severe MCL sprain in that knee in that playing tournament game. So. To me, obviously, when you think about talent around Jimmy Butler, he's got Bam Adebayo, he's got Tyler Hero. Now they went out and traded for Terry Rozier. But last year, they went out and tried to get Damian Lillard. They weren't able to get him. And Jimmy Butler stuck with it. He said, we have enough to win. So, uh, you know, it is interesting, the back and forth that we're seeing. Um, but I, I think Jimmy Butler, he's always made it clear he wants to be in Miami long term. It's going to be about will they be able to pay him what he wants. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to keep him there. Look, the, Pat Riley said a lot about Jimmy Butler, but he didn't use one particular word. He saved that. He saved it for Tyler Hero. Here's Pat on Tyler Hero. He's, he, you know, he's been, he's been fragile a little bit and uh, broke his hand last year in the playoffs. You know, he had some injuries, you know, earlier in his career. And, and there isn't anybody who, who works, you know, harder at his game in the offseason, but uh, he's got to make some some adjustments, definitely, you know? Fragile. I just don't know that breaking your hand makes you fragile. Like, I don't know how- the Bones are fragile. But like, how do you train to not break your hand? Like, like just luck of the draw. Like this, this, uh, this one, I understand. He's, there's a lot of guys that are fragile that happen, you know, what, Giannis is fragile, Damian Lillard's fragile, like the guys that are just hurt. They would, they, I mean, by definition, sure. I, I guess, it's just, it's part of the game. So it's what you have to deal with. Every team deals with it. So Tyler Hero, to me, he, he's one of their top three players, and that's f for sure. He's one of their valuable pieces going forward. So, like, I don't know if, again, he's Pat Riley's old school, and he calls a spade a spade, but calling one of your best young I mean, players fragile, what you do, and he's not even there, just catching a stray, like, on vacation, is hilarious. But, uh, again, so, there's a lot of things that are out of your control as an, as an athlete, which, sure, does that make you fragile? Does that make me fragile that I tore my meniscus four times? Like, maybe, Probably. but, like, I don't, like, yeah. it's, 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 it's out of your control. So I don't know what else he could do to prepare his hand from not breaking. Calcium, like, maybe? Yeah, like, um, <laughs> Lou, you get called <laughs> fragile. Uh, how you fragile feeling Fragile suck. It's, it's soft, <laughs> fragile, like, it's, the, it's not good. Yeah, I'm not, ex I'm not excited. If I'm a player and you call me fragile, I got an issue with it. I think this is just Pat Riley having a, a lack of a better word, honestly. I, I, I don't think he was trying to call him soft. I don't think he was trying to call him fragile in the sense of how we would take it as athletes. You know, I just think he was trying to say that he's dealt with some issues and his hand being broken and some of the other injuries that he's dealt with. Um, he's had some adversity. I'm, I'm going to give Pat Riley the benefit of the doubt on this one and try and try to say that he wasn't trying to call Hero soft dog. But if I'm Tyler Hero and I'm on vacation with my family somewhere and I hear this, I'm I'm pissed off. It's it is it's a er. I will say fra what? he just means fragile like he's getting hurt fragile. quite often. He's not saying he's soft. He even said he works hard. He works hard as a game in the offseason. Like his bones maybe are a little fragile. Yeah, he's just saying he's just happened to be fragile and hurt that all the time. To the best of us. Um one more. He had something to say about the 65 game. We're still going with Pat yeah, Riley. Yeah, this is the Pat day. Riley segment. It's a whole day. Uh, <laughs> here he is. I don't understand the 65 game rule. I really don't. I know it. I know why they did it, but I don't understand why it's. They said it's okay to miss. At least they're auto suggesting to the players and agent. It's okay to miss, you know, 17 games. You know, and to me, that sends a message 
that it's okay to take a little more time maybe to to get to be a hundred percent when nobody in this league is a hundred percent you know nobody is See, that's the old school thought <clears throat> And, no. uh, well, yeah, it doesn't make, really make sense. I understand what he's saying. It makes it like now they're more worried about their own individual accolades and they're going to take their rest days based on how many games that they can actually miss to still get compensated for their bonuses of their yeah. of the All NBA. You can miss 17 games. I get that, but also it, it's that, that's part of it. We're talking about this whole load management thing. That he he's old school. He wants his players to play. He knows everybody's 82. banged up. He wants everyone to play 82 games. Yeah. And you're fragile if you don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? On the players, on the flip side, I think it's stupid because if, I, if Joel Embiid played 64 games this year and Jokic played 65, and I think Joel Embiid should w still be qualified to make the, to win the MVP. So I think there is some gray area, but I understand what he's saying because he, now he's saying that players have this basically built-in games missed. I, That's yeah. okay. That doesn't affect your bonuses and your money. Subconsciously, you're yeah, telling like yourself, you know, okay, I, can I miss. get 17 days off before the season even starts. Whether yeah. it's okay, so I'm sick and I have. 13 games left, and I can miss two or three of those. I'm going to sit this one out because yeah. I, I, it reaches this this standard. But I, I don't. I never love this rule. I think it's silly. You know what we've never seen in this low management argument and a 65 game argument. Uh, let's say Jalen Brunson on a run that he's on with four straight 40 point games. He's not going to wake up the next day and say, you know what, I'm playing so well. I'm going to take a day off. No, you're competitive. You're like, Fair. shit. I want another. I want another 40. Like I want to put more numbers on the board, and so I think I think I think Mr. Riley and Coach Riley, and, and all respects to to him, I think he's looking at this, um, you know, the glass half empty instead of it being full. I think this should be an approach where a guy looks at it, say, I got to play at least 65 games for um, the things that I've been able to accomplish this year gets recognized instead of the opposite way of worrying about the 17 games that that player can miss. Fragile. My favorite thing from the whole soundbite.